really interesting film. I, I, I feel like I haven't seen anything quite like this. This is your uh, directorial debut. Why did you choose to tell this story and what inspired this, this tale? Um, you know, I, I it was mostly practicality. I wanted to make a movie in one room. And, uh, you know, I saw another a sort of courtroom drama as an Israeli movie called Get, and it was all set in one room. And uh, it was about a woman trying to get a divorce. And I was just very um, surprised by how they were able to talk about so many themes and ideas. And it was kind of funny and suspenseful and like mysterious at the same time. Um, and they, they were able to do it without leaving that room. So I thought if I was going to make a first movie that was in one room, it should be something like this story structure. And, uh, you know, I went to law school and I, I'd known about these sort of academic trials. I'd heard whispers of them. So I started doing research to seeing how they were ran and like what funny things happened in them. And, um, you know, throughout the course of my research and through my own experiences with, deal you know, being an Asian person and dealing with uh, certain aspects of racism in Canada, I, I eventually this story kind of like, you know, built itself uh, little by little. That's kind of how I came across the plot. Yeah. Well, you know, you, you, you put a, you, there's an interesting thing you just said, um, you know, you're in Canada, obviously, even there, you guys are seeing a kind of racism, especially with the past few years, a America, obviously we're having a, I, 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 yeah. <laughs> I it's, yeah. it's a very strange time. It must be kind of surreal to see this story, this particular story become kind of, more than you could have ever imagined relevance wise um well yeah actually we were i can't remember who i was speaking to but my first was producer like when we made the movie two years ago maybe three years ago two and a half years ago right mm -hmm. um we didn't know was when it was going to come out and you know it depended on what festival we got in so we had no idea when it was going to come out and i was feeling a little bit nervous about it i was like oh you know what if this isn't going to be relevant anymore and I think my producer was like, don't worry, man, like racism's still going to be around in like two or three years. It's not not a topic that's going to go stale anytime soon. And you know what? He was right. He was very right. <laughs> I, I didn't I don't think he knew he was going to be this right. But um, but he was right. So. So, yeah, I I don't want to say I'm lucky that it's it's more uh, <laughs> that it's more uh, it's that the movie is more uh, relevant now. But, you know, it. it it was one of those things that I should have known, like, you know, th these kinds of things are not going away. Coronavirus has obviously made things a whole lot worse for um, us, us Asians. Yeah. Well, especially, you know, you had um, the, our leader at, for at the time calling it the China hoax and all that stuff. Yeah. 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 For a long time. Uh, how do how do you feel about it now? Like it, this, has it changed your take on your own film in any way? Um, no, I, I don't think it's changed my take on my own film in any way. I guess you could, I, I looked at it a little bit. Um, I looked at it a little bit differently in the sense that, um, you know, uh, it, the with the American response calling it, you know, the China flu and, you know, they, they seem to want to blame someone yeah. for this injustice that's happened to them, right? Mm -hmm. People losing their jobs, people, you know, having to go into lockdown. They want someone to blame and they blamed it they chose someone and they blamed them and um, similarly in my movie you know the main antagonist things are not going well in his life and he mm -hmm. just wants someone to blame and he chooses a target almost at random um and he chooses to just like blame them for all the things that are wrong with his life that he can't control um and so i think there was a little bit of that i i, I guess so looking at it through that lens i guess i could see how you know, people sometimes just look for someone to blame and they just want to put someone on trial for the things that are going wrong that have no explanation in the world. And that that's something that's similar in my movie and that's similar that's taking place in the real world now. Now, speaking of, uh, you know, you have a pretty good cast here. Uh, I was very uh, let's talk about both. I, I'm going to I'm going to get their names wrong, but I guess let's talk about the two kind of clashing characters in this. You've got Celine and you've got, uh, what was his name? Jonathan? Jonathan Kelt. Yes. Jonathan Kelt. That's yes. it. Yeah. Uh, how did you go about casting them? Why did you know they were the right people? Um, I had known Jonathan Kelts through a personal relationship. That's uh, our friend. And um, I actually didn't think of him for the role. But 
my friend had told me to watch this movie called 21 and over i don't know if you remember that movie I do. From, uh, I don't know. you remember that so jonathan <laughs> Keltz, i met him in real life and he was like the nicest guy ever and my friend was like have you do you think john johnny should play this role of this real jerk essentially right yeah. jerk is being kind <laughs> and i was like i was like ah oh, johnny like i don't know can he play that kind of character and he's like you should watch 21 and over where jonathan plays essentially a bully like a very very scary kind of bully and he's like not a big guy right um and his intensity was great in that movie and uh i was like oh cool so he can he can definitely play the character that i need him to play so i offered him the role and he thankfully took it and then celine was an audition process because um not a lot of asian canadian act female actors you know that are household names mm -hmm. so we we basically auditioned every asian canadian actress in the city and um, yeah, Celine just had, she just had that spark. She was the only one who sort of scared me with her performance. Oh. And I, I kind of wanted to be scared. Yeah, I wanted to like, I wanted someone to sort of be able to go that extra level where I, I actually feared what they were capable of um, as a character, as an actress or as a person, as a character essentially. And um, Celine really, yeah, Celine was the one that stuck out to me. So that's how, that's how the two leads were cast. Well, it kind of fits too in the in the sense of character. We really don't we learn from her from how as the movie you know progresses. We don't really know what her story is, and we kind of it builds, which is really interesting. And even in the end, you kind of question what you've just watched. Was that the intention for you? Is it, did you kind of want to leave it to the audience to kind of figure things out a little bit? I always, I always like, um, I don't want to call it an ambiguous ending, but like no, has some, an, ending, an ending that has some sort of open to interpretation ending, yeah. right? Um, a decision was made in the movie, but you don't, you know, you might not know exactly what that decision was, or you decide for yourself. And, and I, and I, I, the, one of the great things about finally having the movie out is I'm, I get other people's interpretations of what happens. So I get other people's takes on, on the ending and on, on the movie in general. And that's been great to hear. Mm -hmm. And, and people sometimes ask me, it's like, Oh, is that right? Am I right? Like, did I guess correctly? And I'm like, it doesn't matter what I think. Like I'm not an expert on the movie. You think I am because I wrote and directed it, but I'm not like, there's so many directors who say, you know, older directors who are like, yeah, I made this movie in my twenties and I thought it was about this. And then in my 30s, I realized, oh, I was going through this life situation. So it was about that. Mm -hmm. And then in my 40s, I look back again. And oh, my, it's like, oh, my God, it was about this whole complete other thing that I had no awareness of. So so don't take my word for what the movie's about. Make your own decisions. And I, and by the way, I'm never going to tell you that you're wrong. You can no. tell me it's an, alle it's an allegory for, like, you know, like, the, the Persian War that was fought in the 1500s. I'm like, cool, that's an interesting interpretation. Tell me more. Tell, tell me more about what you think about that, you know? <laughs> um so yeah, I, I really like hearing what people have to say. And yes, there's a lot of mystery baked into the movie and baked into the character in terms of motivations and um, and sort of uh, secret intentions. But I, I look forward to hearing what the audience thinks. Uh, like, those things. Yeah, that's true. Because you you know look at you look at back at movies like I, I would say I mean going really back, uh, Deer Hunter, Blade Runner. You you kind of so there's some stuff in there that you're like huh interesting i don't know if maybe that means something else today maybe that meant something else to the director but i think that's it's like music you hear a great song it's going to mean something different to everyone else and your film every generation I, has its own interpretation yeah absolutely and i feel like without giving anything away to the the viewer who haven't seen the film the ending is such an interesting it's an interesting look, and I I was yeah. kind of I have my own ideas, and I don't want to I'm not going to spell it spell them here. <laughs> that's no, fine, that's fine. That's fine. But uh, it's it's a it's a very interesting way to do f finalize it. What okay. what was the most challenging thing for you to to put this together? I mean, I it, it's boring to say, but it's always logistics. It's always money and time. You know, it's a small budget. We shot it 13 days, I believe, and Ow. that room was extremely hot. Um, I, I'm a, a little bit upset at myself because, like, when I watch the movie, I'm like, it doesn't look that hot, but it really was. It was so hot. Um, I think I, I made a decision earlier on that I didn't want people to just be doused with sweat all the time because it would have made shooting very difficult and, like, you know, matching the shots and things like that. But, but I think people were basically covered with sweat in every other time other than the times we were actually shooting when the makeup person would actually get make them look nice. So 
it was really it was really hot it was a small room there's a lot of people um and there's never enough time you know the script yeah. was you know as you know there's a lot of talking in it even though there's it's only like 80 minutes the movie um there's a lot of talking in it and and um you know there's a lot of pages that we needed to shoot and um we just never had enough time or money to do the things that uh you know to do cer- cer- some of the things that i wanted to do logistics wise like you know moving the camera around yeah. and doing all these fancy camera moves we couldn't really do any of that i had to really pick and choose so you know sacrificing a lot of those was tough for me personally yeah no actually i thought the i thought it lo- the look of the film was actually pretty interesting and you do yeah it's an 80 minute movie but you keep it moving you keep it it yeah. doesn't feel like it it certainly moves fast <laughs> you know <they're, laughs> Thank that, you. that's Thank not you. an issue i I, yeah. wanna, I wonder like you know i was watching it and, and and i don't know a lot about canada law and i don't know a lot about how this would play out in even here uh how you you had mentioned you'd done research and you 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 went to law school uh yeah. how detailed did you get <laughs> I, I tried to get really detailed. For some reason, I was very um, concerned with the idea that someone was going to call me out and be like, this is wrong, this, this whole thing's wrong. So I tried to like do as much research as I could, um, talk to every academic that I could. And the more research I did, the more I realized no one knows what they're doing in there. Every university kind of has like a different way to do it. We all know what a courtroom for murder looks like. For right? sure. It's a jury, yeah. it's a judge. But like, with these academic tribunals, it's like every courtroom looks different. Sometimes it's one judge, sometimes it's three, sometimes it's five, sometimes it's four hours, sometimes it's three days, sometimes it's an hour, right? And like the more research I did, I was like, oh, you guys are all just making it up as you go along. And that is kind of made fun of in the movie where yeah. where someone's like, yeah, you guys are just making up this trial, these trial rules as you go along. And, um, and I was very relieved by that because then I could just make up whatever permutation of things that I needed for my story and nobody could point at me and be like, that's wrong. And I was like, cool, if that's wrong, you should tell me how the right way to do it is because um, it was really hard to figure out because universities kind of are ashamed of these things, right? Mm-hmm. No university wants to admit that they're having secret trials uh, because students are plagiarizing. That's kind of an embarrassing, shameful thing. Mm-hmm. So to try to figure out what those trials look like was was tough. And, well, um, yeah. And the, yeah, yeah. Well, it also I, I've got you. You have to, you we we kind of have to talk a little bit about the fact that we've seen some interesting things happen in schools lately with you know Felicity Huffman and and the you know <laughs> I mean let's yeah. let's be real. Do you did you what is the most crazy thing you've discovered while doing your research that happened at these trials and how how desperate people get? Um. Uh, well, I. I... There's there's some real intense there's some real intense stuff that like I was shocked by like um you know like uh, there was one story I I might be mixing up the details but it was a medical student and they might have been like like they, I think they were plagiarizing uh, uh they might have been like plagiarizing but then their medical license might not have been fully legit and so there's a question of like does that really that's like breaking the law. Like you can't like lie about being a doctor, right? But it's not it's not illegal to lie. It's not illegal to plagiarize your history mm-hmm. essay. It's not. It's against the school rules. Yeah. But it's not illegal. But when it comes to like a medical license or something like that, then it, it becomes dicey. So they try to handle that inside the legal world of the school. And I'm like, shouldn't that be in the legal world of the legal world? Like and not and not in like the school. So stuff like that. Um you know, these plagiarism situations can get really, really serious. In mine, it's kind of silly and uh, superfluous and frivolous, and which is why I can make fun of it. But but it does get very serious. And, you know, this is like a, what, $200,000 degree that someone has paid for, and it's hanging in the balance. You know, that's a lot of money for a lot of people. Um, and so think about the the casualness with which my tribu- the tribunal in my movie handled the case. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't want... You don't want those judges who don't know what they're doing to handle your two hundred thousand dollar case. Um, so stuff like that kind of shocked me. Wow, and you know, you you do you know the comedy here is uh is is very unique. It, 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 for the viewer, it is a very funny movie. There's a lot of humor here. Why did you feel that needed to balance it out? And I like it. I like that a lot. It's an interesting touch. 
why the kind of give it that humor edge to such a, you know, serious type of film? You know, I, it's interesting that you say that. I, I set out to write a comedy first, and then, like, I just kind of needed the dramatic engine to sort of propel it forward. But I, I always had the intention of making it, like, a funny movie. Oh. Like, the when I, when I conceived of the story, the jokes came to me first. And then I almost, like, built the plot and the drama around the jokes, right? Like, oh. like a lot of, um, I guess you could say that a lot of the humor comes at the butt of or sort of comes, springs from the main antagonist, Keith. I, I think that's fair to say. Mm -hmm. And so, like, you know, I kind of needed to, I, so all those jokes came to me, and I was like, well, I got to build a character that is capable of, like, being this character, of, of being natural and sort of having their own motivations and sort of, you know, having their own grudges that they would put themselves in this ridiculous situation so that I can make fun of him. Mm -hmm. um, so, <laughs> so yeah, it was always a comedy to me. Um and and you know i i i really wish that people i, I really wish that people would know that this is like i meant to entertain people right there's this like a there's like a mystery element there's a suspense element yes it's about serious issues like race and gender and power dynamics just inside of university but the jokes came to me first and everything was kind of built around uh, making it as entertaining as possible for the audience I think it were, and I, I, you know, the, the fact that you say that, I, I'm like, yeah, you know, it, it did feel like a comedy in so many ways, and I was like, this is really, I wasn't what I expected. I, I think I, you know, you expect something serious, you expect how, you know, it. I, I feel that's a tricky balance, and you did an interesting job. I like that. I like that humor. I like that it made it move it made it snap i guess you could say <laughs> well i know a lot of academics in my life and and the first images that came to me were just people in a room who took themselves way too seriously <laughs> like just way too serious and and that's always funny to me right people who take themselves super seriously and who think that, that what they're doing is really important to like i don't know the idea of education <laughs> you know the the injustice against <laughs> education um that was always hilarious to me and um yeah so that it's it, it started out to me it started out from like a ridiculous concept that these people think that they're like judges and juries and executioners when really they're just a bunch of academics um in a room and <laughs> academics and administrators in a room it trying to solve someone's future yeah it makes so much sense because i keep thinking of keith and just that character <laughs> just, yeah he's, he, i was like yeah. this guy's insane <laughs> yeah yeah I well mean... what, three so you shot this three years ago it's finally coming out now yeah how do you feel uh, you know do you are you are we gonna see a change in in the voices that we see on screen uh making a, a bigger world and 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 seeing here more more minorities more lgbtq more asian more do you think we're getting to there that point i mean i, I definitely need a job so i'm hoping so i'm hoping <laughs> the answer is yes um it does seem like we're moving in that direction at least in terms of um the stories that are coming out mm -hmm. um yeah that I, it does seem like we're moving in that that direction whether i hope that um you know and it's always backed by very strong filmmakers and artists and so i think it i think the audience will enjoy it. it's it's always I, I, you always have to take the audience into consideration and it's different, right? Like mm -hmm. I, how many times can we see like the same, you know, middle-aged white guy, you know, going through a middle, you know, going through a midlife crisis movie, like just making a middle-aged Asian guy. And it suddenly it's like fresh and interesting and different. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm like, you know, audiences just want something new. They don't even necessarily need a new story. You can just take like my best friend's wedding, classic romantic comedy and just put Asian people. And then it's like, it's the same movie but it's like fresh and new and audiences will like it. I guarantee you they will, but because it's different. Um, so yeah, I, I do think there is uh, there is more of that coming on. Um, can I just say, when, I, when you first started asking the question, I thought where you were going with it was, do you think there's going to be a movement uh, that's suggested in the movie where like that we're going to turn against the academic institution of higher oh. education? To which my answer, I know you didn't ask this question, but my answer is yes, I think that time is coming. I think eventually people are going to turn and look at this thing and be like, we're paying so much money for what? Mm. Um, and I, there's already a little bit of that in the, in the zeitgeist, but I think we're going to hit a tipping point. And like, you know, that, that um, academic scandal thing with Felicity Huffman, I think was just like, just a little taste, a little taste. I think more is coming. I yeah. think you're right. And I'm actually really glad you said that because it, it is, 
you know, right now we are looking at like we're, we're Americans are trying, especially, and I don't know how it is over in, on your in Canada, but we're trying to wipe out student debt. We're trying, you know, people are trying to do the right thing. It, 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 I think the majority of people would be like, yes, this is okay. But you have those people that are like, well, no, no, I don't. I had to pay for it. So wait, yeah, why? Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. I had to suffer. You do too. Yeah. <laughs> it's a weird time. It's a. It's like it's no, tough. no. It's tough. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I'm. I kind of feel like I can see where you fall on that. Uh, do you? Do you go? Are you a political person? Do you, Do you kind of? I. 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 I'm not really. I. I wish I was more active in it, but um, you know, I would like to think that whatever political, whatever um political views I have do come out very starkly in my work. I can't hide how I feel about things like progressive ideals and, you know, yeah, discrimination and diversity. I, I can't hide my feelings when I make a movie about it. Yeah. Um, but uh, me personally, openly speaking about it, I, I don't, not too much. I, I prefer to speak through my work, which is more honest, frankly, and probably a better reflection of how I feel about the state of the world. It also allows you kind of to step outside of your realm and not just your own worldview you know what i'm saying i i think that's really i i think that's why this what's interesting about this film is the levels you went to to actually tell the story the detail you went to and, and to to i've never heard of anything like this i would have never known this <laughs> you know? yeah thank you cool yeah well dude 